life, more blessings. You know the vibes. We back at you. Do it for the love. You know me, everybody Davis. You know my co-host is in the building. Sounds spit fire. And as usual, you know we're feeling good, feeling great. Feeling great, feeling good, and we hope you are too. This is our first weekend episode. Yeah. It's daytime. It's Saturday. The snow has hit us. We finally got the snow back in Maryland. But uh, for all the first-time listeners that have never tuned in or watched us before, we like to start off with checking our temperature, see how the week has been for us, and see how we're feeling. So, my brother, how you feeling today? Cold, bro. <laughs> Talking about the snow, I think we're going to hit negative 19. Today? Not negative 19. God damn. I'm going to say once. I'm thinking about the cheese game. Okay, okay, okay. 19 degrees today at uh, the lowest, and I think that's the lowest it's been so far this year, and it's got that bike to it. So oh, that's cold. Try and bundle up. You saw we got the new tunnel vision threads, yes, and uh, yes, shout out yes. to Kyle for hooking us up with the new coats and balls. TV, TV. So been extra warm, but as far as uh, life going and what we doing with the podcast, everything is good, bro. How's your temperature? Man, my temperature good, bro. Like you said, it's definitely cold. But you know me, November, baby. I love this weather. Uh, prefer, I prefer this weather over the heat. Right. Only thing good about the summertime is female clothing. They look great. Everything else, I prefer the winter. We bundle up, we look better, you know, layers. That's my style. Yeah. But uh, And what I don't like about the snow, though, is the fact that it doesn't matter to adults no more. Like, I work at a university campus that it literally have to be a blizzard for them to shut down the school. They run us a report, and I'm a central. So I'm supposed to be there regardless, but I can't work remote. So my temperature is good, man. Just adapting to the weather and, you know, it's getting ready to lock in. We got a special guest today, so just ready to tell the people what we're talking about. For sure. For All sure. right, so today's episode is about for the love of the process. I'm going to give you the definition of process by Webster. Mm-hmm. A series of actions or steps taken in order to, perce- to achieve a particular end. So you can break that down however you may like, but when I think process... I think about how people go through their thought process when something happens that may not be in their favor or when they actually hit the pinnacle of success. How do you turn the lights on and off? How do you start to treat people that's been there from the beginning? And then I also think that athlete that's been grinding since the AAU days that really want to make it, got that father behind them. As we see today, we see a lot of father-son relationships John pushing it. Yeah, John Moran, several other young individuals in the AAU circuit that they push that process, the hard work. Like, I don't care how good you are, son, we out here in the snow, we out here in the heat. So when I look at the love of the process, I just think what it takes, what it took for us to get here. We say that a lot on a lot of our episodes because a lot of these topics fit what it takes to make something be great or what it takes to execute a plan. So, so let's talk the love of the process. How do you look at that? I mean, the process for me always holds a special place in my heart because everything that I do take steps Mm -hmm. and a particular steps to make sure that whatever I'm trying to complete is getting done. You know what I mean? Um, But whether it's life, art, the whole thing, it's all a create, creating a masterpiece. Imagine painting on a blank canvas. For me, every stroke, every layer of color, it matters to me. Um, The process is where the magic happens and where the ordinary turns into something special. Right. right, and uh, in life too, we creating our story, we crafting it. Every decision made is like a challenge for us, and uh, it's a brushstroke on the canvas of our journey. And it's tempting to, to fast forward through the process, but you gotta wait until the piece is finished, and you gotta go step by step because that's where the beauty lies in it. Absolutely, and a few more things that I had in my notes that I wanted to add into it was. When somebody has a process, you got to think that these people have put in so many working hours. They have dedicated themselves to, they could be trying to cure a disease. This could be a person that's in any field that if you're a scientist, the process to trying to figure out, even though people don't believe in COVID shots and stuff like that, it's a process that people have to go through at a time. And they put in so many hours that they believe in a working formula. And also when I think of process, I think how people process trauma. Especially in our neighborhoods, like that shit sits with you forever. And a lot of people judge people off decisions that they make, but they don't know their process. They don't know what they've been through at this point, up until this point, to make them decide the things that they do. So I just really wanted to put that out there that really give people grace as we move forward in 2024 because everybody has a different working process, everybody has a different family process, and everybody has not come from the same you know, background that you come from. So when you meet somebody, just get that some time. Yeah, and the steps is important. Um, and if you don't know the steps, it's always prudent to do your research, whether it's reaching out to somebody that's 
already seasoned in that field or may have done it before you, but it's important to, to reach back out to them and, and see what the process is. Yes, yes. So just going on before we move on to our next segment, trust your process as the Philadelphia 76ers said, because as you see now, they got the MVP, they looking like one of the best teams, and it's all because they trust the process. You know the vibes. So moving forward, we got our sponsor highlight for the day. You want me to go ahead and throw the hoop to you? You want to go ahead and do the drum roll, please. So today we're highlighting the Treehouse Project. The Treehouse Project is a nonprofit organization with a mission to support disconnected youth through mentoring programs for girls and their servicing Maryland. Their motto is healing through sisterhood and community. THP offers peer mentoring. Talk to them. Mentor hikes, yes, yes. the Young Jewels program service and incarcer incarcerated youth. Another one. The Plan a Seed program provides internship opportunities for local businesses and THP step team and workshops and seminars to connect to a multitude of community organizers. Go for it. THP is always looking for collaborative partnerships and if you're interested in opening a THP chapter in your neighborhood, community, or school, Visit their website, or if you know a young woman who can benefit from personal development, check out their website at www.treehouseprojectinc.org. And uh, they're they doing it big in the DMV. Man, listen, it sounds like it, man. Shout out to all, all of the different businesses, all the different business owners, all the different people that are doing things similar to the Treehouse Project because it's so needed in the community. Everywhere, every city, every state, we need more people like that, more businesses like that, more companies like that. Let's get it. So, moving forward for all of our first-time listeners and viewers, this is a segment called Love to Not Love. This is a moment where we try to little poke fun at things that we don't prefer or things that we may not pick as our favorites. Like, if my favorite color is red, I'm probably not going to like blue. Not a gang member, but I'm just saying, you know how I go. <laughs> so, that's pretty much how Love to Not Love works, and we just like to poke fun at things and just let a little bit of our personality out. So, you want to go first? Of course. Kick it off, my brother. Love to Not Love. I love to not love people who mess up the process. Okay. Ain't that terrible, though? That's horrible. Especially when you, you sit and you plan, some, plan something or any idea, whatever you're trying to concept for months or whatever time it take you, and then that one person come in and just try to mess everything up. Right. Whether it be them adding their opinion, I think you should do it this way, or maybe we should do it this way to get it done quicker. Right. That is the worst, especially when you, if it's a group of six and you got five, that's all on board. Don't be that one person and try to mess up the whole process, the speed track it. That's more than likely only to benefit you and not the team. You process know, process I love it. Process killers. Get them out of here. It's crazy. I don't know if you know what I was about to say, but it's so similar. I want to... Shine a light on, not shine a light, it's love to not love, but I'm shining a light on what I love to not love. People who only like to give advice if the person listens to them. It's like you only want to share what you have and the things and gems that you can give to somebody if they just verbatim do exactly what you say. To me, that's like you really, really don't want them to shine unless you can say, I did that. You could put the like spotlight and be like, yeah, you know that they're under my umbrella. And to be quite honest, everybody loves their mentors, and if that's who you are, then serve as that. But don't have like a hidden agenda that's really like masked with a self-interest that you really, really don't want that person to grow. Mm -hmm. Or take what they know and their knowledge and combine it with your experience. So I love to not love pretty much like a gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. A gatekeeper of knowledge, a gatekeeper of growth. And, you know, I'm not a fan of you, and I love everyone. And that's crazy because my next love to not love was gatekeepers. Talk to me. Because they interrupt the process for people who actually put the work in mm -hmm. to make it to the next step. And because you have your own animosity or hatred or whatever it be for this person that you, most cases you haven't met, you block their blessing. You know what I mean? Don't be, don't be that, man. Like if somebody, don't block is, my blessing. if somebody is on their way up the ladder and you are the the door for them to get to that next right. op opportunity and there's no real reason for you to block it, then let them through. Thanks. My last one, um, for love to not love. So we have a guest on today and I'm not sure she's a fan of the person that I'm about to say, but I am not for Big Sean slander. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I'm a huge, huge Wale fan, and I feel like, unfortunately, it came out in the era of Drake, Cole, and Kendrick Lamar, 
and they always get the bottom of the totem pole. Even ASAP Pauls. Even ASAP got Rihanna. And I feel like he was a part of them. Big Crip don't get no love, but the big Sean Slam, especially after having a baby with Janae, I feel like he been cooking. And since he's been quiet, people been poking at him and talking about him. He was literally trending on Twitter on X this week for nothing. It was like, man, they just was literally quoting his bars and be like, trash, trash. I'm like, Big Sean got more hits than Lil Baby. Whoever y'all favorite artist is today, really check the stats. Look at it. Not just the billboard numbers because these are a little funny with streams. Really look at the hits, tangible hits that still play in the clubs today. Features with whole game, more and more, I ain't got to go on, drink, etc. So Big Sean Slam is not going to be tolerated moving forward. As I've said on other episodes that you have, have not seen yet, but you will, this is the year of bringing back the art of the craft and whatever you do. So real talent is going to shine, so keep that same energy when it starts to hit. Yeah, for sure. Moving forward, our next segment is going to be Shine the Light series. And today, we're going to shine the light on something that's been trending lately, but it's really been going on for a long time. And it's funny how in society today with social media being so accessible that when somebody does something, maybe say three years after somebody else does it, everybody acts like it's the first time. And shout out to Taraji Henson, but she's doing the same thing that Monique did. Maybe a little bit less in your face with it, but at the same time, she's taking advantage of this whole color purple run to tell people that like the way they treat us is trash. And she's not the only one because this has been going on for a while. So I want to shine the light on our black queens in Hollywood. The writer's strike has ended, but that battle that they're going through has been going on and still going on. And I don't see a strike happening for them, and it probably won't. But they've spoken several times. Um, oh, I can't think of her name right now. Oh, Viola Davis. She says all the time, and she loves Merle Street, but she's like, I don't make half of what Merle makes. My counterparts make 10 times what we make, and I've done everything. I got the EGOT, I done got the Emmy, I got the Oscar, I got the Tony, I done done it all. So I just want to shout out my black queens and shine a light on them because they deserve it. Special shout out to my girl, Quinta Bronson. She has won the Best Actress for uh, Ebbett Elementary this year, but last year she won it for her writing. And I also wanted to shout out the queen that's probably played every black wife in black history, Betty Shabazz, Tina Turner. Oh, man, I should have wrote the list of more, but Angela Bassett finally got her honorary Oscar, and it's well-deserved, and she been deserved it. So um, I just want to shout out my black queens in Hollywood, man. Keep being the top of the top of your craft because you're necessary in that art form, and we gonna show you love if nobody else do. And it ain't about the money, they do it for the love, but cut them they check, because they deserve it, and you owe. So pay, Let's do it. for sure. So, you ready? Ready to go, I guess. I think it's time. We got a very special guest coming to you, Do It For The Love, episode 10, for the love of the process. Beautiful people, right back at you. Like we said before, episode 10, for the love of the process. We have a very special guest on with us today. We have Miss. Jalisa Anderson, you know they call her the hair mistress, aka the celebrity stylist and many more things. It's a pleasure to have you on. How are Thank you? you for having me. I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. So what's going on? How are we gonna keep this thing off for the show? So you know here at the Do It For The Love podcast when we bring our guests on, we like to pretty much cover the who, what, when, and why of their journeys. Yes, yes. And, what, and, and to discover some of the hidden gems about that journey. So it's a pleasure to have you today. We got a busy guest who's going to be traveling later on. So like yeah. I said, with the who, what, when, and where, just starting out, tell us who is Jaleesa. So I am a hairstylist. I've been self-employed since the age of 17. Uh, but this may will make 17 years that I've been doing hair professionally. And, you know, I love it. I started out at Cat North. Um, I got my license by the time I graduated. And my career just kind of took off with like hard work, determination, following my goals, and here we are today. So it's a huge blessing. I'm grateful to be where I am within my career. And for those who may not know, what's Cat North? Cat North Center of Applied Technology North. So it's a locational school uh, in Anne Arundel County. Okay. All right. Dope, dope, dope. So I'm going to move from the who and go into the what. What motivated you to getting into hairstyling? What motivated you to become what you're becoming, what you've been doing for the last 17 years? Then I got a specific question of a certain, I read in your bio, that you do it. I just want to know what got you into that. Okay. So uh, I would say the person that motivated me was my babysitter. 
Okay. Right. She was a neighborhood hairstylist. Okay. She never got her license or nothing. But when I tell you she did everybody in the hood hair. We all know them. Everybody. And when she was babysitting me, I was going to school with my hair in different hairstyles every day. Okay. And I was just amazed by the reaction that I got from the people at school. So that's what really like hooked me on to doing hair. So your babysitter got you in the yeah. yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. Shout out to, listen, as they say growing up in the neighborhood, everybody's with each other, everybody's family. So that neighborhood babysitter, hairdresser, take it to the grocery store, everything they do, they all in one. And who would think that person inspired you to do something you're doing for the rest of your life? Right. It's crazy, right? They always say that adolescent uh, lessons are the things that stick with you for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. but most of the time. Mm -hmm. So... My second part of that question was, it says that you do hair for like mort mort and morticians. Mm -hmm. so, um, what got you into that? Because a lot of people may not be able to handle that. That's a very specific I would say I thought about like venturing off, thought about like going back to school for mortuary science. Mortuary um, science. I think working with the deceased is very impressive. Like somebody has to do it. It's a very underrated job that doesn't get like a lot of limelight. Mm -hmm. So during my journey of trying to figure out if I'm gonna go to school for it or not, I started um, shadowing a licensed mortician, uh, actually in Baltimore at March Funeral Home. Okay. Her name was Glennis KK. And KK. Yes. Uh, and it really started there. People that I knew, uh, they knew about my volunteer work that I did at the funeral home. Mm -hmm. And I was only 18 when I did it. She was doing this volunteer? Yeah, like I wasn't getting paid for it. And then one of my friend's moms passed away. And they just asked me, like, listen, you did my mom's hair before. I know you know how to do makeup. Mm -hmm. So you're the only person I trust with it. And I took that as, like, a really important job. Yeah, and it major. just, it turned into a thing, you know, Word of mouth, and then that was it. So it's something that I really love doing on the side. Okay, thank you for answering that thoroughly. Because when I saw <laughs> it, I know that's like different. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that takes like either you come from a background of it or something like a story like that, like a friend that she was really close with was like, yo, mm -hmm. my mom being laid to rest, I need you holding me down. And you did that. So, yeah. so, so, so to you. I got a, before I get to my original question, I have a follow up question. So, how does that take place as far as how do you hold that person, like when you're doing it here and all of that? Uh, their head is propped up, like with a stand. Um, most times they're in the casket already. Okay, so they have the body is already set up. Fully. Yeah, I prefer for the body to be set up, and then you know I put like plastic and everything around their clothes, um, so that way as they're getting them dressed, they don't mess up what okay. I did. Gotcha. So nine okay. times out of ten, they're already in the casket. Yeah, so that takes. Yeah, that takes. A, it's a lot. So that's like one of the final steps. Cause that sounds like a small tool. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's big. I've never asked anybody that question. I've never known anybody that does that line of work. So I had to ask you that. I either do it in the back room or the room like where the viewing is. Real. So, Shout out to you. It's a lot, yeah. Um, what part of your journey, your journey, has pushed for you to start the product line? And can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about the conception of that? How mm -hmm. it's doing right now? How people could? Push? I would say uh, I moved to Detroit. I didn't have anything. I didn't know where I was going to work uh, as far as like hair salons. I picked back up with my uh, freelance position with Matt to kind of like build the bridge until I figured things out. Okay. And the natural hair community just kind of like sucked me in even more. And I don't know if y'all know, but Detroit is hair capital. They spare to no expense with their hair, nails, makeup. Uh, so, um, you know, my career took off and I was like, I can't keep selling products for another company. Because mm -hmm. I, I didn't feel like I was making any money off of it. And then, you know, some products like work on some people, some don't work on others. So I really wanted to create something to use on all natural hair. So that's something that I take a lot of pride in. I tell everybody, like, I use the same products on anybody that sits in my chair. And I love your nails, by the way. You just oh, said you want to shout you. out God. Like, as soon as you yeah, say, you know, Detroit, they share, you know, they don't spare no expense. I'm like, I don't play around with my nails. You know, I had a question right now, but I could touch on it because she answered it. I was wondering what made you move to Detroit out of, because at first I thought I, I lived in Atlanta. Okay. So I just assumed that Atlanta was number one, if not top five for hair, because they had the Bronner Brothers. Yeah, community. they are good, yeah. But I did not know at all in Detroit. I mean, yeah, yeah, if you look into like the hair wars and stuff, like in the 90s, hair Detroit wars. definitely like took it off. But yeah, so why I moved to Detroit, I was dumb in love. Uh, 
but my career kept me there, so. Shit. Well, <laughs> listen, nigga, you just got a close up. Like, I was dumb in love. Dumb, dumb in love. Dumb ass nigga. <laughs> Whoever you are, brother. <laughs> A girl, it was a girl. Oh shit! <laughs> right. Sorry, ma'am, miss, lady, how you? It's okay. No, but she but, still looked you down too, lady. I'm grateful though because I felt like uh, touching on the process. Mm -hmm. Being with her was a part of the process that I didn't know that I needed, and that's what got me to Detroit. Got it. Sorry if I missed it in your intro. Where are you from originally? I was born in New York, okay. and then uh, my family we moved to Maryland. What when I was like twelve? So I lived there up until five years ago. Okay, so New York, Maryland, Detroit. Yep, that's your town. So gosh, gosh, oh, you were you were well shit. Yes, you know, so, well, all first. three hard four places. <laughs> yeah, because all, but all three kind of different. As much as like Maryland to me is its own little thing, and New York city life because I don't know what part of New York, but I'm assuming mm -hmm. city life. And New York, Detroit, Detroit is more like Midwest. Cali, it's a little different yeah. than the other two, but black people travel everywhere. So, you know, similarities, but different. Yeah. So, my next question is, why the hair mistress? Why that title? You out here snatching people that don't yeah. have a real beautician? <laughs> when I read that, I'm like, oh, somebody go to a beautician. Like, this shit trash. They just come to you and they just took over the yeah. network. Yes. Yeah, James so, St. Patrick style. Tell me how you work. If you look, um... The up the definition of mistress, it means like woman of power. Okay, okay. So it has like a negative connotation to it, but uh, it actually has like, you know, it's positive meaning. Yeah, hey, correct. So, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty powerful. I like that. I like that. <laughs> See, this, she's already taught me two things today. I did not know Detroit as far as the hair and the makeup community mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they was into like Detroit play because they were into their suits and their they, looks. So it kind of makes sense when you really like look into it. But I wasn't just really into that lane. But um, yeah, I never knew Mistress had also had that connotation mm -hmm. to it. So that's really powerful and strong. So shout out to you. Yeah. So um, how has your experience been in teaching your unique curly cut method mm -hmm. and both nationally and internationally? It's been amazing. It's a dream come true. I never would have imagined when I was 17 that I would be here so tell us today. Tell about the curly cut method. Be quick about that. It's a cut that I created to cater to natural hair that's versatile. So let's say I have a client, she likes to wear her hair natural, but you know, she going out on a date, she want to, you know, straighten her hair, it'll still translate well. So that's what really sets my cut aside from everybody else's. So some curly cuts, they could, you know, leave the hair choppy, so to speak, but uh, something that I created for, you know, everyday woman. Gotcha. Just out of interest, how long does that process normally take or does it matter with how the hair is and the style of the person or what they're going for? Or was it like the curly cut process is the same for each person? Just curious to ask. Uh, the process is the same. It could take, you know, longer or shorter amount of time just depending on their hair. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say at minimum like two hours. Okay. Cool. So that includes like full service stuff like wash, uh, massage, steam treatment, cut, style and everything. So the tail end of the question was how has it been teaching it? So is teaching the curly cut method hard to, to teach? It is. It is. It's been a learning curve for me teaching people who are left-handed. Oh. Mm. But yeah. it's, uh, you know, I love it. I love teaching because the more people I teach, I feel like I'm able to perfect my skills and facilitating with people. Um, and that's just another way for me to connect with aspiring hairstylists. So the process of that has been amazing. Nice. Gotcha. Did you have any um, who, what, when, where, or why for? Left on yours? Um, before we move into the next segment? My last question was, can you highlight some memorable moments from servicing destination weddings and events around the world? Hmm. Uh, I would say London for sure. I taught my curly gut method and did hair out there. Okay. Um, and I pretty much planned it around the Beyonce concert. <laughs> it's coming. It's more. I had to. Um, what else? Destination weddings. I've uh, done weddings in Mexico. Okay. Uh, where else? Chicago. Oh, I know Kevin. Uh, uh, so yeah, I married somebody in Mexico. Really? Yeah, okay. that's, yeah, that's what For anybody trying to get married, this is a multi-faceted. Yeah. You know, I am ordained. I was raised Catholic, I ain't got nothing to do with being ordained, but I just let y'all know a little background on it. I just don't talk. You know, I can get you across that aisle if y'all struggling, husband, wife. I'll change your life, you know. Back to her. Uh, so, yeah, um, what other memories? 
I would say uh, here, I just wrapped up a class at Cat North. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a full oh, circle that's for me. Said. That's the that's biggest. So that, to start off my year, was like super dope. So when you started, you came back full circle, and now you're giving gems to the people. Yep, so uh, my best friend, he's the barber instructor at Cat North. So I taught his class and then the cosmetology class. Listen, I'm not saying that when you leave home, you got to come back, but it feels real good when you come it back. It does. It's different. It's, it's just, super it's different. rewarding. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, it's a blessing. I'm happy to start my year off like that. Congratulations on that. That's a great you. start. For sure. Year of the attack. 2024. So next up, we have a segment called Rapid Fire Questions. Okay. I told you a little bit off camera, but let me tell our first time listeners and viewers what this is about. This is a segment where we just want to be very quick, fast with the questions. We want to get a little bit of personality about our guests mm -hmm. and just see how she, you know, acts in a heated moment with how her, <laughs> how her brain, how sharp she is when it's time. So. Okay. Uh, the person that tried to tell you that I'm the wild card on the right of you, I'm going to let him kick it off because he is definitely the wild card. Um, I guess since we talked about you being a, a ham audition, <laughs> if you had to pick any celebrity that's dead, who you could do, who would it be? Ooh, that's dead already? Yeah. If you, had to, if you could go back and do it before they funeral. Whitney Houston. What you think she would have got for if they would have asked for I did a mean silk press and did her makeup, make her look like she's sleep. Nice. That shit should not be funny to me. I'm over here in tears. Listen. Yo, this guy in funerals. <laughs> did he say it? Did he just say it? What you think she would do? <laughs> It's so real, but I'm telling you, I don't know if you ever watched the episodes. That's me that done 10. He's brought up three of at least six For times. Real? He'll find a way to be like, yeah, so like, if people Look, were saying. I thought I had an obsession with dead people, but. Listen, I kind of do too because I like vampires. <laughs> but at the same time, I ain't had a vampire funeral. Really. And this man is, though, I'm like, yo, like, who you bite last? <laughs> you know, All right, so moving on to my rapid fire question Detroit Summers or Detroit Winners? Ooh, Summers. Summers? Summer, right. Detroit, summer, but very. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to my homegirl, Adjane. I swear I'm coming. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I keep promising. She told me that it's a casino that like borders Canada. She was telling me a bunch of oh, stuff. Yeah. Man, I'm trying to come. like, uh, what? Maybe like a five mile radius of three casinos. Detroit, I'm coming. Definitely. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Where's that? So, yeah. morning routine blow dry, air dry? Uh, air dry. For sure. For, yeah, I'm lazy natural, so. <laughs> I'm lazy natural. I'm lazy, <laughs> I'm lazy natural. natural. You said that real natural, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, if you're a movie person. Okay. You like movies? Yeah. All right, bet. What movie have you watched? And you watched that movie top to bottom, and you was like, whoever the hair team is on that movie, they did their goddamn thing. You just enjoyed the style. It could be like, let me give you like a sentence, something like Dream Girls. That's like a time yeah. set movie. The curls is banging the whole movie. Then you can see they go through 70s to the 80s. Something like that when you just see the hair transition. If you got one, we can spin the block on it if you don't have one let at the top. Let me see. Let me see. Jerk Curls is a good one. I actually just watched that. Um, I'm going to say The New Color Purple. Okay, I haven't watched it yet. I was so impressed. So my favorite movie is the original Color Purple, but I know that the newer one is based more off of the musical. Okay. But when I tell you the cast, they looked phenomenal. I've heard good things about it. Oh my god. I haven't seen too many bad reviews. Yeah, I've yeah, heard some no. good things about it. And I like the cast. Most of the cast is solid. I think the worst review I did see that it was more of a musical. But yeah. that's to each of them. Yeah, I like musicals, especially when it's Fantasia and people sing it. Yeah. Uh, Taraji, you know, down with her vocals, and most yeah. people don't know she can sing. So um, I think it's probably a good film. I gotta check it out. It was amazing. Right, yeah. A hairstyle that you love to not love mm -hmm. trending right now. <sighs> oh, that's a good one. Love to not love. Okay. Uh, what is it? I'm gonna bleep it out if it comes out. <laughs> yeah, if it gotta come out, you know, I'm trying to think. I think uh, it's called like a jellyfish cut or something. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I saw it. One of my clients sent it to me, and I, it made me cringe. The jellyfish cut. Yeah, yeah, it was wild. It was like you know, uh, party in the front, business in the back type of thing. Right. Make sure you send us a picture. Yeah, of that I got too. you. So when we put the clip up. Y'all gonna see that the jellyfish cut. Right. Yeah. yeah so, so I don't know if some if they were playing, but it just was not cool. Next time you go to the beautician, they be like, "What you want? I want I'm a stinger bitch. Let me get the uh, <laughs> let me get the stinger bitch one. You know, I don't want the like the poisonous jellyfish, but I want her to feel me. Yeah. All right. So 
Moving forward, I have another question for you. If you weren't doing hair or creating hair products, what lane do you think you would be in? And I know people always say don't have a plan B, but if it's something that like you ever had them days where you was like, what else can I like? What would I do if I wanted to transition from this? What is something that you think you would be doing? I would. Ooh. Yeah, we gotta put the hustle down and start something. Yeah, else. like is there something else that itches you that like you just love? And right now it could just be a hobby. I'm gonna say okay. I would be one of these three things. I would either be an artist. Okay. Um, Musician. I love no. I love to like paint, draw, oh, oh. Use any types of arts and crafts. Gotcha. Um, a chef or like marketing and advertising. Okay. I like all three of those. Yeah. I think marketing and advertising, when you become a boss, that goes into your job period. Right. I feel like a lot of those things you said you naturally do, we naturally do when you want to take on more jobs. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when you pinpoint it and actually get into it, right. probably will come a beast in it. Because it's a lot that goes into just doing one of those things. Yeah, yeah so you sure. know, people don't realize I'm the hairstylist, I'm the marketer, the advertiser, I do everything. One, one more So show. yeah, I do love it. Um, and I would say I'm more uh, geared towards the psychological aspect of marketing and advertising, like picking apart the consumer's brain and how to reach your target audience. Okay. Just ask one more before it's all getting to heads. If you was a chef, what's your best meal? Uh, I would say Alfredo. All right. I love pasta too. For sure, like any kind of Alfredo, I make my noodles from scratch and my sauce from scratch. So it's not jar no jar shit over here. Okay. No jar shit. She's like a little, <laughs> little Italian woman that being a No, literally. I'm in mean, there, you know. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's kind of like a gold shirt. No jar shit over there. <laughs> <laughs> no jar shit over there. Alright, so, um, you know, I know up to you through being friends with Trader Kid. Mm -hmm. um, so, what's, my question is, what's your, you have a favorite Trader Kid moment, memory? It's too many. Mm. Too many. Um, I would say the first time I saw him perform. And I saw his passion come out on stage. And I felt like there was another side of him that I saw. And, you know, it was just like, wow, this is this must be how I look when I do hair. And people mm -hmm. look at me type of thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Man, rest in peace to Trey, man. Yes. Forever, man. TDK forever. Wow. Uh, so, how many more questions you had? That was it. That was, yeah, I got one more for you then. Have you ever had, I know she didn't touch my hair moment? Like a Karen or a Carisha, it could be anybody. I've had that too many times. Can you give me, that shit can you give me crazy. just one quick one? Yeah, so I was working at the mall, predominantly white people. I had my hair in two puff balls, and this white lady came up to me and was like, Oh my god, where can I buy those? And then tried to touch my hair, and I like moved back so quick. <laughs> Come on, people. Listen, keep your hands to yourself. If you didn't put it in the product, don't touch the merchandise. Not only that, I'm not no animal at a pet is loose. That as well, too. Don't touch no I don't care person. who you are. Don't touch me. Right. <laughs> respectfully, respectfully, respectfully. You did amazing. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you shot through that thing very, very smoothly, very, very quick. <laughs> So at this moment, we have a segment called Spin the Block, where okay. if there's anything that we touched on from your upbringing, to your journey, to the traveling, to the um, just selling your line, however you go about it, is there anything that you would like to spin the block on and maybe elaborate on more that you didn't? That's for all. It could be anything. Yes. Um, I always want to spin the block and share more light on like vocational schools. Mm -hmm. Like awesome. finding a trade while you're in high school is so important because everybody's not equipped for college, and I feel like a lot of people waste their time and money going to college trying to, you know, fulfill the dreams that their family or parents may have for them, right. um, knowing that there's other avenues of success. So, like I know for me, I love what I do, and I'm so grateful that I found trade school. And that was a, it was a, it was available because a lot of students don't have that. Right. So you know, compared to somebody that went to school to be a lawyer, you know, I make just as much money as lawyers Talk or doctors. Talk to them. You know, it's it's out there. You just gotta go get it. And I wish more people opened up the door for students to know that but college is not the only answer. Yeah, gotcha. And it's crazy that you said that because I'm not like I don't have any 
children in the high school world. So I don't know, are trade schools still a thing? Like, is that still heavy push in schools like it used to be when we were coming up? Yeah. Like, maybe uh, maybe the youth just don't gravitate to it like they used to? Not I'm everywhere. asking. I'm really asking. Yeah, no, I don't think everywhere don't have vocational schools. We, yeah, gotcha. I think it would take more of a traditional parent, old school raise to give their kids a heads up about those type of things. It's like, and if you don't, then your kids probably going to be looking at some of the new trending jobs, like being a social media influencer. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Easy, not the easiest stuff, but the stuff is right. Think about that. If you're looking at a person like a country Wayne, who we just watched this interview, we talk about some of the money that he was able to generate online. And then you look at a trade where you really got to put physical labor in, which one are you going to choose? Right. right. So that's the, that's the difficulty that we're going through today's time with trying to teach a lot of our traditional passions and workplace things to the kids because they, they're looking at the forward thinking of work, AI and shit. So. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So pretty much my message to everybody, what I get out of that is, is focus for one, parents focusing on your kids and their talents. And two, when you becoming a teenager, especially that 15 to 18, if you already don't know what you want to do, try to lock in on something and it doesn't have to be college. But pick up on the craft, pay attention to the things that interest you, that you just love naturally without having to be motivated by others. And try to really, really fine tune that and become great because it's harder to be a boss, but you're going to become dormant just working for another company and doing something, even if you love it. She loved what she's been doing for 17 years and they hit a point where it's like, I can't just keep selling other people's products. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I really love that message and you know, I'm just pushing the um, school for sure. So... After that, I feel like you just gave one, but if you yeah. want to, actually, let's sell going to Hidden Gems. So, because he can explain it to you and just maybe draw a different type of answer. Okay. Well, yeah, the, so the first Hidden Gems part that I had down, I feel like the answer may be your curly cut, because I was going to ask you, could you reveal a technique, a trick that kind of developed over the years? Mm -hmm. Would that be the curly cut that you developed, or is it? Any? Yes. Okay, so since you answered that, what's the most underrated hair care practice that you can make a significant difference water water mm -hmm. like water is the best form of hydration and stop letting these companies sell products that say it'll grow your hair mm -hmm. but water is the best thing and speaking of water i just want to have a special psa for rick ross <laughs> this nigga just <laughs> said the other day i got a machine and not made water out of h2o i got a bunker <laughs> Nigga, <laughs> drink water. <laughs> Suppose I make water. You see that? I'm gonna look it up. Dude. Hey, yo, that guy's so like, I ain't gonna lie, you be making me laugh, but you're a wild guy, bro. He said anything. Yes, <laughs> I make water out of HBO. So, all right, that was a beautiful hidden gem. So, um, yeah, I think you've given a lot of just natural hidden gems. Just talking you. about your journey and how you've gotten to where you've gotten to and just how you were naturally motivated. I even, to me, the hidden gem that I've got out your story naturally is. Being inspired by the person that babysat you. Yeah. Most of y'all just badass kids when the person that babysat you come <laughs> over. But the fact that you actually listened to that person, that person inspired you because she actually showed you a crap. She actually didn't just come there and just do. She was being paid to do a job and did a job. Yeah. <laughs> that's just, work. Yes, that's like an extra treat because she just loved playing in my hair. So she would do my hair every day. Man, so just shout out to all of the people that had been a part of the process yes. because tonight is about the love of the process and I just think it's a natural thing when you inspire somebody just being genuine. So moving forward, our next thing is where like we get you a close-up shot, you look into the camera and you give the people an inspirational moment. Um, it could be an actual one experience or you can just share a message with the people that will inspire them. It could be a young beautician. Okay. It could be a young woman dealing with heartbreak because of the love of her life. Just, you know, <laughs> make, <laughs> make her move to Detroit. Listen, Detroit I, know somebody, I know somebody that left Arizona to get to Detroit. Yeah, Sorry, wow. Mark, not all of that to Arizona to go to Detroit. You went to Detroit and somebody broke your heart. Not because so, they broke your heart. Well, yeah, but you wanted, you wanted, to, get, yeah, you wanted, you wanted to uh, get over some stuff and Detroit helps you get over those things even though you went there. Part of the love. So, right. just what is an inspirational moment you can give to anybody that is a part of your journey or an experience? I would say something that inspires me to, you know, stay focused, keep going day to day, um, continue doing what sets your soul on fire. Like, no matter what, no matter who understands it, who doesn't, just continue doing what makes you happy and always, always find several reasons to smile. Hmm. 
Oh, I wish we had our I know y'all see the smile on the face. <laughs> I'm going to press the button like it's here because that was really, really sweet. And I just love the messaging because that's what it's really about. And it's trust in the process. Yeah. And that's pretty much what I got from that. So at this point of the show, we have our open minutes where no longer about your craft. It's no longer about your exact story. What's going on in the world that you see right now? 2014 is coming hot. It's a lot to talk about, and even 2023 was a hell of a year. So is that something that you would like to talk about that's just trending in the world, or a message you want to give to somebody, not inspirational, like something you saw on Twitter, X, Facebook? Yes. Uh, and we all know Cat Williams. He didn't set the tone for 2024. I feel like this is going to be the year of our relations. You know, mm. a lot of light is going to be shining on people, good and bad, and they're not going to be able to hide it. Okay. But I would say starting with that, yeah, like he came in hot. <laughs> yeah, no, sure. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes, and I'm super, super excited to see where uh, Club Shay Shay goes. Like, I'm very happy with the growth that he's gotten from this. So now I'm anxious to see, like, okay, what's next? Mm -hmm. gotcha. And that's actually a great segue because they were talking about Club Shay Shay being bigger than Joe Rogan. I don't know if you saw that, but like they literally is the podcasters are talking about like, can he be the one that like breaks through and take over the podcast game because Shannon Sharp has an appeal. I was say, say he more likable. Yeah, he has an mm -hmm. appeal that's like ex athlete, so you already got people that love you from that field. And now they're taking this kind of like me and you were saying, it's kind of getting into like a messy, more approach, but he's letting people deliver their truth. It's a safe space. It's a safe space for truth, and you should not have an unnatural allegiance to losers. Okay. So, it's like a million quotables <laughs> that came like, out of one My favorite was, why do liars lie? Yeah. <laughs> why do liars lie, Shiny? I have so many favorites out of that. But I, I would say, uh, we, we should talk about what we talked about before the episode came on. You flying to Detroit. The Lions are in the playoffs. Oh, she yeah. just got to, well, were you there when they won the first home game last year? Yep. City was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy, crazy. Like when I tell you they're about to be losing their minds. Yeah. So I'm excited. I hope they win it all. Yeah. This weekend is going to be pivotal for Baltimore and Detroit. And I'm just praying for two good outcomes because, I mean, outside of the jokes of the crime and stuff, mm -hmm. two really hard fighting teams that come a long way. And hard nosed cities that don't get helped by the government. Yeah, I was gonna say Detroit. Right. If, any, if we talking about that, Detroit needs it more because I feel like from an in infrastructure standpoint, no, less love for Detroit hands down compared to a Baltimore. Right. Um, but as it pertains to crime, both need a lot of help. Um, but I just I feel like winning the Super Bowl for either city creates new jobs, new advertisers coming in, and mm -hmm. ultimately, again for Detroit, it could be grand, bro. Really. Right rebuild up their whole city so yeah they definitely need it um like i was mm -hmm. saying they're uh preparing for the draft mm -hmm. in oh, april so, know that. The draft coming in so um it's i'm super to excited yeah. to see what this does for the city they've been counting down since last year like they got a stand um downtown okay counting down for it so i think this is gonna be super dope like you said bringing more stuff to the city they definitely need more jobs um, a lot, you know, so I think this is gonna be really dope. I know we done with Rapid Five, but Maryland and Detroit, uh, well, not Maryland, yeah, and what Maryland, aspect? Michigan, I guess, everything, whatever aspect you make you well, Detroit up. is its own state. Oh, so okay. I, don't so know, I can't I say Michigan, I right? That. Okay, I was right. Um, yeah. I'm gonna have to go with Detroit. I ain't mad. What time you play me? <laughs> I actually changed it to tomorrow. All right, yeah. <laughs> <Mid -ride. laughs> But uh, no, no, in real, in real talks, I feel like I want to say two things. With the swells as the Super Bowl goes, I'm definitely rooting for Baltimore, but as being that Baltimore already has two, I know for a fact that it would do more for oh, Detroit. Yeah. I want Baltimore to win for Lamar because I just hate how the white media and black media treats him as a black quarterback. But as far as the Detroit's line story go, Dan Campbell, uh, the way the Rams did um, the quarterback, Everything about it, and just the city as a whole, it would be so major for that city. Yeah. So um, me and Sal was talking about how dope it was seeing Calvin Johnson, Big Sean, Eminem on the sideline, okay. Paul Rosenberg. Yeah, Burry Yeah, Burry oh, yeah. So it's like, it's a lot of legendary things, a lot of legendary artists and people that come out of Detroit that just don't get the light shine on them. So Detroit, we hope y'all make it to the Super Bowl and lose in a close game to the Ravens. But if y'all win it, I'll be rooting for you. Oh, yeah. 
And um, yeah, man. So, so any other final moments you want to leave with the people? We're pretty much wrapping it up at this point. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you Thank on. Thank you for having um, me. I enjoyed it. Yeah. So, so anything? I mean, you know, I always just like to end talking about what we started with, which is the process. Um, enjoy the process. Yes, and, yes. Enjoy the ups and downs of the process because even through it, it may not turn out the way you expect it. But uh, believe in it. Um, take advice. Don't be too critical of advice and uh, given to you. Um, and the last thing I say about it is believe in it. Like it's a lot more proven pluses about the process than it is negatives. And it's all around you to be able to look at for an example. So, you know, our guests has shared her story and we always constantly share ours. So we live in proof of the process. Mm -hmm. And even this episode is, was a process. You know, me and Buddy linked up last night and this morning making sure we got our questions right, all the info, and uh, we hit and a dope, another dope episode. Right. I had breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> I drove something with turmeric and ginger root in it this morning. Oh, I'm uh, scared. All this and everything. You should be. You should be. Especially since you could be true. You should be. But, you know, y'all know how we do it. Atelier Baltimore. Shout out to our studio. Shout out to all I do it for the lovers. Treehouse do Project. Shout out. Special shout out to our Shine the Small to Highlight recipient, the Treehouse Project, and our Shine the Spotlight recipient, which is all our black queens out in Hollywood fighting for their equal pay. Special, special shout out to the beautiful hair mistress, thank queen, you, celebrity you. stylist, you know, Mr. Lisa Anderson. And, uh, you know, episode 10 for the love of the process. It's been another great one. Y'all know the vibes, thank man. You. Love yeah. to you all.